severe through a historic crisis, I want to speak directly to the 1.4 million people who call Nassau County home. Given all that's occurred and changed in just six weeks, I'll give you a comprehensive update on how we got here, where we're at now, and how we move forward. I know that for residents watching tonight, the impact of COVID-19 is a concern that rises above all others, and rightly so. I want to take a moment to thank our county workers, our amazing team at the Department of Health, our Nassau County police medics, police officers, detectives, and supervisors, public safety officers and 911 operators, our corrections officers, deputy sheriffs, and the food and maintenance staff at the jail, fire marshals, fire commission, and fire comm, the men and women at the Office of Emergency Management and the medical examiner, probation officers, our dedicated folks at the Department of Public Works and at Parks, and the professionals at the Department of Social Services, Human Resources, IT, and Consumer Affairs. You are showing up and you are getting the job done. I also want to thank all of our telecommuting workers serving our residents in new ways. The offices of Minority Affairs, Hispanic Affairs, and Asian Affairs are making sure we're reaching every community. Thank you to the hundreds of county workers and volunteer firefighters and EMTs who've tested positive for the virus or were in precautionary quarantine and are now cleared and back in the fight. To my audience tonight, wherever you're sitting, wherever you are, please join me in a round of applause for our employees and the great work they have done for this county. All of us have been affected. If you haven't been personally hurt by this crisis, you know someone who has. A parent, an uncle, a friend, a coworker, a neighbor. Thanks to the proactive action we've all taken, we have successfully controlled the spread of this virus. This wasn't easy, and it's come at a high cost. We now find ourselves in an unprecedented situation with mounting challenges, our regular lives disrupted, society shut down. The price we've paid in precious lives has been most painful. Just six weeks ago, Nassau County had zero deaths from COVID-19. It's now taken more than 1,400 residents from us. It's taken three members of our Nassau County family. It's taken residents like Mike Field, father, husband, volunteer EMT with the Valley Stream Fire Department, and he was a first responder at Ground Zero on 9-11. We lost residents like Tony Carter of Uniondale, a worker at Winthrop Hospital, and Wantaw High School football coach, a man whose influence in the community extended well beyond the field. We've lost parents, grandparents, best friends, veterans, EMTs, nurses, pastors, teachers. There are too many stories to bear. I want to share my condolences with the families and loved ones of those we've lost. We mourn and grieve with you, even if we're not together physically. Let's commit to win this war and come back stronger and more united than ever in the memory of the ones we've lost. To those who are fighting for us on the front line in a public environment, whether it's late nights at the hospital, long shifts in an ambulance at the grocery store, whether you're staffing public transit facilities or waiting on call in firehouses, to the janitors, electricians, plumbers, and all the essential workers who protect us not just now, but always. Thank you. This crisis has not created heroes. It has revealed the heroes already among us. Healthcare heroes like Monique Molesky, who courageously continued working even after losing a relative to COVID-19. When Monique returns home from her long shifts at St. Francis Hospital, she isolates herself in her basement to protect her family. We know there are so many others out there making similar sacrifices. We've seen everyday residents step up. So many of you are doing your part by staying home, limiting the spread of the virus to keep others safe, even when it means canceling trips, weddings, bar mitzvahs, or celebrating a holiday without the loved one you want to hug. Sometimes it's just about being a good neighbor. 
I'm proud that our residents not only hunkered down to fight this battle together, they went above and beyond. Residents like 95-year-old retired seamstress, social butterfly, and great-grandma Millie Bonagora of Floral Park, who's sewing hundreds of masks with stitched together Long Island. Or Vincent and Gina Santoro of Franklin Square, who discovered a fresh supply of N95 masks in their garage, asked friends on Facebook to join them in donating personal protection equipment, PPE, and are now collecting thousands of medical supplies. Our public libraries, along with Nassau businesses and school districts, are making and collecting PPE for hospitals and first responders, young men and women organizing deliveries of supplies for those in need, like Blair Longer of Hewlett, who raised more than $50,000 to purchase and deliver meals for essential workers and for seniors. We've seen residents of all ethnicities, faiths, and backgrounds come together as one Long Island family to support each other. The grit, perseverance, ingenuity, and love we've seen on, this, on display in our communities has shown the world what we're made of. Across the country, in places where the virus is just arriving, they've watched and learned from us. Tonight, I want every Nassau County resident to know that we will recalibrate, we will recover, and Nassau County will emerge stronger than ever. From the moment I got word from our health commissioner, Dr. Larry Eisenstein, about a viral respiratory infection in Wuhan, China, Nassau County began moving. As the situation evolved and we learned more about COVID-19, we got the word out immediately and often about the necessary precautions to avoid spread, like washing hands, avoiding touching your face, covering coughs and sneezes, staying inside if you feel sick, and now, as our new normal, wearing a face covering when you're out and social distancing isn't possible. Nassau County is a critical part of our bustling metropolitan area with its three major airports. Although we didn't know this early on, in January and February, the virus was destined to come here, and come here it did. We were really among the first to deal with this on the front lines in America. And in this uncharted territory, Nassau County has led the way. We followed the data, we listened to the experts. Nassau County's Office of Emergency Management opened up and began supplying personal protective equipment to our first responders. We sourced PPE everywhere we could. Our evidence-based approach led us to shut down schools with the support of the governor before anyone else statewide, which I believe helped hasten to others to follow suit. We immediately engaged our hospitals because although we have world-class medical facilities here, our healthcare system simply wasn't built to sustain a huge surge of patients. I activated our medical reserve, of co medical reserve corps of more than 1,000 volunteers and centralized fire communications and 911 operations to increase the efficiency of our response. I want to thank Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder and OEM Commissioner Stephen Morelli for coming through for Nassau County in so many ways during this crisis. Through our, our own efforts and with help from our state and federal partners, we've marshaled the resources necessary to prevent the collapse we feared. The situation is still precarious, but we flatten the curve. Because we've taken this challenge seriously, Nassau now has had eight days of declining COVID hospitalizations. Ventilators are no longer an urgent problem. We still need gowns, masks, and other personal protective equipment but we've steered well clear of a darker outcome many had feared inevitable. That's something we've accomplished together. Early on, we identified the incoming economic calamity and we acted. Nassau was among the very first in the nation to suspend eviction enforcement because we knew that it would be both wrong and dangerous to kick people out of their homes during a public health emergency. We waived fares for riding on nice buses and mandated daily deep cleanings and boarding buses in the back to protect drivers. Nassau was the first county to create an economic advisory council to track the losses of our business community. The council received more than 1,400 responses to a survey it conducted. 90% of those responding were small business owners and more than half already laid off workers. Most of the rest expect layoffs before the end of the year.
More than half predict no profits in 2020. We are now using all of this data to secure federal recovery support we need to bounce back. As we continue to manage this devastating health crisis, we won't procrastinate planning a safe, methodical, economic reactivation in coordination with our regional partners. Thank you Hofstra University President Stu Rabinowitz and IDA Chairman Richie Kessel and all the members of the Advisory Council for leading this effort. To give our businesses some breathing room, I've indefinitely extended the expiration dates for county licenses and registrations. If you're one of Nassau's 10,000 home improvement contractors, if you own a gym, barbershop, or you're a four-hire a four vehicle driver, you shouldn't have to pay for a license you can't use. Every day, this crisis has thrown something new at us. Food insecurity has become a concern. So through Nassau BOCES, we partnered with our school districts to provide grab-and-go meals to kids no longer able to get them at school. And we've made sure that families in need know about the nine food distribution centers the county is setting up. We've partnered with Meals on Wheels and Catholic Charities to feed more seniors isolated at home. Veteran Services Agency Director Ralph Esposito swiftly modified our Vet Mart to provide a drive-by food pantry for veterans and delivery for those who can't leave the house. If you're a vet in need, call us. We've partnered with Northwell to set up a free pregnancy hotline for expectant mothers so they could get answers about COVID-19 and how it affects labor and delivery and the health of mother and baby. Nassau engaged our faith communities to ensure that Easter, Passover, and Ramadan can be meaningful at home. Our faith leaders have really stepped up, helping members worship in new ways, and we are grateful. We continue to alert the public about the rise in coronavirus scams, getting the word out about bad actors taking advantage of the anxiety and isolation some of our residents, especially seniors, are experiencing. Remember, if a stranger asks you for personal information, like your social security number or banking details, hang up the phone, delete the email. We identified price gouging as a problem early on. And thanks to your tips, we've rooted out those who are selling faulty N95 masks or unethically jacking up prices on hand sanitizer. Remember, you can report price gouging to our Office of Consumer Affairs. This crisis has been especially difficult for those struggling with depression and addiction. I need you to know this. If you're going through a tough time, you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to, we're here. Call seven days a week or set up telehealth counseling we've made available during this crisis. We know that home isn't safe for everyone and we've raised the alarm early about a disturbing uptick in domestic violence calls. NASA has partnered with the Safe Center of Long Island to offer more help for victims. Assistance is there for you around the clock if you need it. From the beginning, I've tried my best to keep you informed, to be honest and transparent. In addition to our daily briefings, social media communication, and virtual town halls, we've added, added a texting service to provide up-to-the-minute alerts from the county. Sign up for texts in a choice of six languages. We've done everything we can to reach every community, every person reaching every medium. Day by day, hour by hour, this crisis throws new challenges at us. And I'm proud that Nassau County has risen to meet these challenges. So where are we now? Our healthcare workers, law enforcement, and first responders tell me they really appreciate residents' outpouring of gratitude. But what they need more than anything right now are the resources and support to do their jobs while protecting themselves and their families. We'll keep working to get them PPE as we manage the curve downward, but we'll need more federal help. Our hospitals have done an incredible job coordinating with each other and sharing resources. They're also working and collaborating on antibody testing, which tells you if you've already had the virus and are likely immune. Once an antibody test is validated and approved, we need fast, reliable testing kits at multiple locations. Our first responders and healthcare workers will be first in line to get tested for antibodies. And as we plan to restart society, large-scale testing is key. 
Working with the state, Nassau County has successfully ramped up viral testing, the kind of test that tells you if you currently have the virus, but we need to do more. We're especially focused on scaling up viral testing in our hardest hit areas. That's why Nassau County is partnering with our community health clinics, called FQHCs, to increase access to testing regardless of insurance status or immigration status, and added more viral testing by appointment in Hempstead and Freeport. An Elmont site is next. We know that racial health disparities in access and outcome have long existed, but this crisis is shining a bright light on the problem. Higher levels of pre-existing conditions like diabetes and hypertension in our African-American community are helping lead to dispro disproportionately higher levels of deaths due to COVID complications. Regardless of your ethnicity, if you have underlying health conditions like diabetes, heart or lung conditions, please pay extra attention to how you feel. You may be used to feeling ill, but we urge you not to ignore the signs and get tested if you meet the criteria. That is the best way to protect yourself and your family. Now, under my administration, we have been very cautious about expanding county government. Before this crisis hit, I submitted a fiscally responsible budget and for the second consecutive year, a no property tax increase budget. Nassau County continues to operate under a financial control board known as NIFA. We were improving the county's finances over the last two years and NIFA and the credit rating agencies took notice. And then we were hit by the pandemic. I won't sugarcoat it. If this crisis, this crisis will be a serious setback for our county's finances, there's no doubt about it. As of today, we are forecasting a decline in 2020 revenue of more than $300 million, including a drop of 10% in our sales tax collections. These revenues pay for the salaries and wages of our first responders, law enforcement, and other essential employees, as well as for the maintenance of our roads, bridges, and parks. Such a drastic revenue decline in such a short period of time is devastating to our ability to operate. A difficult road lies ahead. Here's how we stabilize the situation. Moving forward, my administration will commit to three objectives. We will maintain fiscal responsibility, we will not raise taxes, and we will ensure our law enforcement and first responders have the resources they need to keep us safe. I will work with our municipal unions, which will play an important role in planning for the future. Our fiscal integrity over the last few years has paid off, but we will need to pull back a number of new spending initiatives. I am ordering a freeze on hiring and non-essential purchases, as well as a review of all outside contracts. I have asked each department to develop spending reduction plans, but I want to make clear that as our county employees have stood by us in this difficult time, I will now stand by them. Our team has done an incredible job of responding to this crisis, and we will continue to have their back. We will do all we can to bounce back, but we need state and federal support to replace lost revenue. I will continue to do all in my power to advocate for robust recovery aid, and I won't rest until Nassau County gets the federal funds we need. Our homeowners and commercial property owners need as much breathing room as they can get right now. At my request, the governor issued an executive order authorizing me to delay by three weeks to June 1 collection of school property taxes. The delay was supported by our three towns Hempstead, North Hempstead, and Oyster Bay, and county legislative representatives. It is my hope that this delay will allow businesses to access federal programs such as payroll protection to provide funds to our citizens. We must ensure that federal recovery fund is based on the rate of COVID-19 infections, so New York State gets its fair share. We are asking the federal government to provide immediate debt service savings and near-term debt relief for local governments like Nassau County. For our property taxpayers, we're pleading for the repeal of the unfair cap on state and local tax or SALT deductions to give our residents the relief they need now more than ever. New Yorkers, especially Nassau residents, have long sent more tax dollars to Washington than we get back in federal funding. 
Let's do all we can to make sure we're not shortchanged on federal aid when we need it most. I want to thank all our federal and state representatives working hard on behalf of Long Islanders. And I especially thank Governor Andrew Cuomo for his steady leadership and support of Nassau County during this crisis. Although we're now moving into a new phase, coronavirus remains a monumental public health crisis, and we're still losing residents every day. We will continue to fight to protect to save lives as we begin to reopen for business. Life will find its balance again. It always does after a crisis. But it's up to us now to reimagine our future, our new normal. I'm honored that Governor Cuomo has appointed me to the task force to reimagine New York. And together with our partners in Suffolk, New York City, and Westchester, we will take a methodical approach to restoring our economy while preventing another outbreak. This is an opportunity for us not just to reopen, but to reopen smarter, to build better transportation systems, better housing, better public health, better social equity, and better use of technology. We already know we'll have to reimagine the workplace and our schools. Employers I speak to are already thinking about which workers can continue to telecommute. I was glad the governor reopened marinas, boat ramps, and golf courses. And I think we can take more steps forward in other sectors of our economy, such as outdoor construction. From an economic development perspective, we'll have to revise some of our project timelines. But county projects will serve as an economic stimulus and offer much needed jobs. I am providing a blueprint for our, our activities to the legislature as my formal state of the county report. Nassau County legislators although not here with us this evening, have been supportive of our funding requests throughout the COVID pandemic. I thank Presiding Officer Rich Nicolello and Minority Leader Kavan Abrahams and their delegations and look forward to navigating with them, continuing to navigate with them, on the county's recovery from the economic impact of COVID and working together to revitalize our economy. We'll continue to work collaboratively with our business community and nonprofits and with labor. Projects like the Nassau Hub can be the economic drivers we envisioned pre-crisis, even in this new environment. This is daunting, but we are Long Islanders. We are New Yorkers, and we are Americans in this together. It is these moments, as in the months after September 11, that remind us what we're made of. We are resilient. We can adapt. We will meet the moment. So let's continue to fight this virus with the bravery and love we've been demonstrating. Instead of letting this bring us down, let's continue to rise up. Let's keep taking care of and protecting one another. And let's work together to make sure Nassau County comes back healthier and stronger than ever. Thank you for joining me this evening. God bless you. God bless our hospital workers, first responders, and essential workers. And God bless the United States of America.